I'm Nick White from Tech Fishing. Today we're going to give you an overview about CMAP Genesis and what the product is. CMAP Genesis is a product that was previously known as Insight Genesis. It's a program that allows you to create your own, your own contour maps and vegetation and, and bottom hardness maps. It's a product that you can go out, record your own sonar um, and then turn it into maps, generate them to to make your own maps or there's also a program where you can utilize the social map where everyone's information is put together. Come with us today and we're going to give you an overview on how everything works and put it together. What you can see here we've got the CMAP Genesis product overlaid on our Lawrence unit. This is a, an area I've previously mapped so I've downloaded this map in one foot contours. As you can see here we've got coming down to a deeper hole in the middle We've got some points sort of coming out here, so some rock points coming out. This is the sort of product that's really going to help you um, with your fishing, so you're going to be able to find those points of interest, but also help you with your navigating on, on new um, areas, new waterways as well. So we'll um, do a bit of a comparison now between obviously the CMAP Genesis product and a Navionics card. I'll bring up the dual screen. So what we have here, we've got CMAP Genesis on this side, Navionics Gold Card on this side. As you can see, the difference in contours is massive. So we've got four contour lines here to define, you know, 40 to 45 foot um, deep, deep hole. Whereas on this side, we're getting the detail where everything's really popping out. You can see all the areas with really sharp drop-offs and, and rock points coming out as well. So that's a bit of a comparison between two sort of off-the-shelf products and the CMAP Genesis itself. To use CMAP Genesis, we're going to need a Navico product. So we need either a Lowrance, Simrad or a B&G chart plotter sonar combo. You're also going to need an SD card, a mini SD card, um, anything up to 32 gig. So no bigger than 32 gig. What we're going to do, place the SD card in the sounder. Come into Sonar, so to record, um, we can use any transducer to record contour um, depths, but if you want to do bottom hardness or vegetation, we're going to need a 200 kilohertz transducer. So to set up our recording, we're just going to come into Advanced, Log Sonar, come up to File Name, We'll just call this one Morton Bay 1, MB1. With your file format, so we only need the sonar information for the CMAP Genesis, so we're going to use SLG. That way it's going to make our files a lot smaller and a lot quicker to upload. Um, once we've done that, select our memory card, the one we put in on the right, which was a blank SD card, and we're just going to hit record. So now what you'll notice, we've got a little red dot up here, which that means obviously we're recording. It'll come up with a little box down the bottom as well that'll tell you all the information. It'll come up probably every 20, 30 seconds. So um, yeah, that's pretty much how we, we set up to do our logging. Now we can go and fish a certain area, um, just fish as per normal and record, or we can go and do our mapping where we're gonna go backwards and forwards and try and get a lot of detail for the area we want. So that's a quick overview on how to use the product. Um, yeah, we'll now show you how to go and do some mapping. So with CMAP Genesis, this product you can use with, if you just go fishing, you can just turn it on and record your day out in the water. If you really want to get some high detail with an area and actually survey the area, there's a few little tips we're going to run through that'll um, give you a lot better um, coverage and obviously end up with a lot better map. So one of the biggest things I use is structure scan overlay. So come down to overlay, turn your structure scan overlay on. Um, this actually shows us where we've actually recorded with our, our structure scan. So the benefit of using this, it actually shows the area where our sort of coverage. So I've got it set at 120 feet or around 40 meters, which that's gonna give us, if we drive up and, and we sort of overlap each side, we're going to not miss anything and we're going to fill the map in. So we've got an area through here that hasn't been mapped and I also want to get more, more um, detail around this whole area. So I'm going to show you how I survey an area. First of all, I'm going to head off. I'm going to pick my first line. So I'm going to drive straight across here. Um, 
you'll see with my structure scan overlay. So what I can actually do is just clear my live history so you can see what's going on. So as I come across with my chart, you'll see that's the area I've covered. So depending on what sort of detail you want with your map, so anything under six miles per hour, you're gonna get your vegetation and bottom hardness. If it's just contour data you're after, anything under 20 miles per hour. So if we just want that contour detail, we can get up on the plane, sit under that 20 mile, drive backwards and forwards, cover the area really quick. But if we do want that vegetation and bottom hardness, remember to stick under those six knots or six miles per hour. As you can see here, we're using the structure scan to set up our, our, our lines backwards and forwards. So what I'm doing, once I turn here, I'm just going to overlay my structure scan on my last pass. That way I know I'm not missing any ground, but I'm also going to get the best coverage with my map. If you'd like to get really, really high detailed maps, that's when cross hatching and, and running the opposite direction over the area you've mapped as well is going to make a massive difference. But to get your, your good contour depth, this is going to be more than sufficient. As you can see here, we've just got them just overlapping. That way we know we're not missing any ground and yeah, we're going to get really, really high detail. So now we're going to show you how to run some custom colour shadings on your maps. So this is really helpful for setting up like a safe zone. Um, so for really shallow water we can set up zero to five feet say in a red or if you're actually finding fish out on a freshwater dam you might find them in a thermocline and they might be you know sitting at 28 to 32 feet. So we can highlight that whole area around um, the area we're fishing. So I'll show you quickly how to set it up. I'm going to come into menu, chart options, I'm going to go to view and down the bottom we've got shading. Um, what we've actually got, depth one and depth two, but to set them up we can come in and custom. So what I might do, I might come into depth two and we'll start a new one. So what I'll, I'll run here, so we'll come from zero feet, we'll go say to five foot, okay, and we might make that red. So red's a safe colour, we know to stay away from that. Okay, next one we're going to come into, we're going to set this at 10 feet. And we might use a light blue. Now we're going to come in, make the next one, say 15. Okay, Oop. we might change that colour back, make it a lighter colour, so the map sort of looks a bit better. And then what we might do here, so say we've found some fish and they're sitting in the, the 30 foot range. So we'll go 30 and we're going to put this as a yellow colour just to make it stand out. And then we might come into the next point and go 32. And we might run that as a blue. And then we might put one more point in. We'll go at 38. Oh, not three thirty thousand. Zero zero. Thirty-eight. Okay. Right. So now that we've set up our um, custom depth. When we come back out, so now we can come to menu. Chart options, view, down to shading. So we customise depth two. So now when I select depth two, this is gonna change all my colours. And as you can see over here where we've got the shallow water, we've got the red, um, we've got the, the lighter blue going down. Um, obviously in the shallower water, then we've got this dark stuff for our deeper water in the holes. But as you can see, we've got this yellow highlighted on that, that 32 to to that 30 to 32 foot line. So really, really helpful tool, like I said, for finding those fish that are suspended in a freshwater dam or um, yeah, trying to work points and stuff like that 
it's going to be pretty cool to, to replicate the area that you're catching fish in somewhere else on the dam.